Hey guys, Heather Vandermond here with Caldwell Banker Seaside Realty and the Vandermond Real Estate Group. Today we have Casey Raybar, Kirsten Farr, and Will Gregg joining from his car. Thank you for being able to join us today, Will. I know you're really busy. And uh, we love to talk about uh, real estate on the Outer Banks every week and how we're doing during these tough, uh, uncertain times. So. This week, let's start off with Casey Raybar. Uh, Casey, tell us what you're going to talk about this week. So I kind of have a fun little traffic update for you guys. Uh, as most of you know, who come here often, summer and traffic is crazy here. Southern Shores has decided to implement the no left turn rule again. It'll be select weekends throughout the rest of the summer, including this weekend coming up, June 20th and 21st, the 27th and 28th. And then of course, 4th of July weekend, the 4th and 5th, and then the last weekend of July, 25th, 26th, and the first weekend of August, the 1st and 2nd. So no left turns in Southern Shores, which I think will really help that standstill traffic going to Duck and Corolla, which we all love so much trying to get to your vacation homes and us as real estate agents. Yeah, uh, Kirsten and I live in Southern Shores and uh, that, for, so it's the, almost like the first left after the bridge. So it's right at the Kitty Hawk Elementary that people will take that left turn. And it's like a traffic central there. You can't walk on the roads, you know, it's just, it's a residential neighborhood. So it's awesome. They're implementing this rule so that, you know, the, the residents can enjoy their neighborhood and not have to worry as much about traffic. So thank you for that update, Casey. And uh, let's go with a uh, market update, Kirsten. So let us know what's going on in the market. Hey, well, you know, we talked a lot about May last week. Not much has changed there. May was pretty cruddy as far as closings. They were down 66% expected since the you know beach was closed for eight weeks um but obviously on the under contract pendings just you know broke records so we're gonna have a really strong june and july coming pretty excited but this week was all about emotion every agent i talked to everyone is working overtime for buyers sellers the traffic is off the hook you know getting to north towns like duck and corolla and trying to show property to multiple clients, Saturdays, Sundays, fitting everyone in. We are seeing so many multiple offers, you guys. It's almost becoming standard of practice. Um, I've lost millions of dollars worth of offers the last few weeks just for buyers alone. I mean, we've had great luck on other properties, but you know, I had one of my colleagues had a buyer cry. She had written offers on five different properties five and had two backup offers and finally once her seller a seller had accepted her offer she cried so buyers you got to put your best foot forward yeah. um, it's emotional right now so a lot of happy and sad stories this week but um rentals are way up and they're seeing better the numbers than ever so that's awesome. all i got well, thank you for that. And also we had a bidding war on a home in Duck with one of our listings. And I actually had to have the conversation uh, to the, the each buyer's agent, like, look, will your buyer be okay with make, making up the difference between the appraisal? Because we were a little nervous that the, that the prices were going to, I mean, the price was going to be higher than the appraised value. And everyone was willing to step up to the table and be like, yes, we will just accept our offer, please. So it was crazy. And Kirsten was in on that bidding war. And I'm sorry to your buyers. Hey, cash trumps, guys. Cash trumps. <laughs> yeah, that one was a cash buyer. For, and that's what you want when you're not sure about that appraised value. So thank you for sharing, Kirsten. And Will is next. And hopefully he'll be able to talk about his wonderful topic. He's Will, are you with us? Maybe his phone cut. Yes, his phone. Okay, well, all right, let me mute her. I'm going to have to mute him. Um, I'm going to mute you, Will. Uh, so anyway, Will was going to talk about what to do for Father's Day on the Outer Banks, because of course this Sunday is to celebrate our wonderful dads. Happy Father's Day, Dad. And... Um, I know that he was going to talk about J Jockey's Ridge. Will, are you there? Okay, so we're still having we're still having a little technical difficulty. Try one more time. 
Can nope. you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Yes. So, so yes, you can hear me. We're good. Um, all right. I'm going to stop again. Um, all right. So, all right. I'm going to have to mute Will. Poor guy. I'm sorry, Will. So he was going to talk about Father's Day on the Outer Banks. And uh, I know he was going to talk about Jockey's Ridge. There's wonderful golf, Holly Ridge, if you want driving range. It's a public uh, golf course, easy access. And wonderful restaurants to take your family to. So I just wanted to let you know there's a lot of places. The beach, how about that? A lot of things you can do on the Outer Banks for Father's Day. So hope you enjoy your Father's Day with your family. Take the day off if you can. And thank you for having or for joining us this week. And sorry about the technical difficulty. All right, guys. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks for Bye. hanging in.